Top 8 Facts About Gerard Genet's Theories Starting from the late 1960s onward, a more limited version of intertextuality has been developed in a number of theories. A very important representative of such a trend is the French theorist and critic Gerard Genet. Born in Paris, France in 1930, Genet is associated with the structuralist movement and is credited with outlining the concept of narratology and transtextuality. He passed away on May 11, 2018, leaving behind a large body of work that has influenced and will influence for years to come the way we understand literary theory. Hi, this is Michnia. Welcome to Uplife. In this video, we will look at the top 8 facts about Gerard Genet's theory of transtextuality. 1. Intertextual theorists Structuralists believe in criticism ability to locate and describe a text's significance, even if that significance concerns an intertextual relation between a text and other texts. Post-structuralists reject the idea that criticism can retrace the origins of a text. Thus, intertextual theorists have been divided into two camps. The first camp, structuralist in nature, believes that the signification of a text can be fully explained by describing the basic units that form the text and their relation to other texts. The second camp, post-structuralist in nature, emphasizes the uncertainty of discovering the relation between signifier and signified. Jeunet is considered to be a theorist of the first camp, who takes a structuralist approach to intertextuality. Structuralists refocus their attention away from the details of individual works to the systems out of which they have been constructed. Jeunet is not concerned with the individual symbol of individual works, but with the way in which signs and texts function within and are generated by describable systems, codes, cultural practices and rituals. 2. Narrative Discourse Jeanette focuses the major part of his studies on the nature of narrative discourse and especially narrative fiction. In his trilogy, composed of The Architect and Introduction, published in 1992, Palimpsets, Literature in the Second Degree, published in 1997, and Paratext, Thresholds of Interpretation, published in 1997, Jeanette produces a coherent theory and map of what he terms transtextuality, which can be translated as a structuralist approach to intertextuality. 3. What is transtextuality? According to Gerard Jeanette, transtextuality, or textual transcendence, includes elements of imitation, transformation, and the classification of types of discourse. In his own words, transtextuality is all that sets the text in relationship, whether obvious or concealed within other texts. Transtextuality is basically Jeanette's version of intertextuality. Jeanette coins the term transtextuality to distance his approach from post-structural approaches. Jeanette uses the concept of transtextuality in such a way as to show how texts can be systematically interpreted and understood. In order to do so, Jeanette subdivides the term transtextuality into five more specific categories intertextuality, paratextuality, metatextuality, hypertextuality, and architectuality. But Jeanette admits the fact that the five types of transtextuality cannot be absolutely separated from each other because of their reciprocal relationship or inevitable overlapping. 4. What is intertextuality? Gerard Jeanette's first kind of transtextuality, perhaps a little confusing, is intertextuality. Jeanette's concept of intertextuality is reduced to a relationship of co-presence between two texts or among several texts and as the actual presence of one text within another. Jeanette's intertextuality consists of quotation, plagiarism and allusion, thus avoiding a pragmatic and determinable intertextual relationship between specific elements of individual texts. What Jeanette desires is to place any specific element of textuality 
within a viable system that can be easily applied. 5. What is paratextuality? The second type of transtextuality is paratextuality, a concept explored in Gerard Genet's study Paratext Threshold of Interpretation, published in 1997. The paratext in Genet's conception marks the elements at the entrance of the text. This threshold consists of a peritext and an epitext. The peritext includes elements such as titles, chapter titles, prefaces, captions and notes. It also involves dedications, illustrations, epigraph and prefaces which, in Jeanette's opinion, can have a major effect on the interpretation of a text. The epitext consists of elements outside of the text in question, such as interviews, publicity announcements, reviews by and address to critics, private letters and other authorial and editorial discourse. The paratext is thus the sum of the peritext and the epitext. The paratext performs various pragmatic functions which guide the readers to understand when the text was published, who published it, for what purpose and how it should or should not be read. Jeanette makes a distinction between paratexts, which are orthographic by the author and allographic by someone other than the author, such as an editor or a publisher. The main function of the orthographic or allographic preface is to encourage the reader to read the text and to instruct the reader in how to read the text properly. With his account of paratextuality, Jeanette takes a different stance than the post-structuralist who dismissed the authorial intention. The structuralist version of intertextuality reasserts the importance of authorial intention. 6. What is metatextuality? The third type of transtextuality is metatextuality, which denotes explicit or implicit references of one text on another text. In Gerard Genet's own words, it unites a given text to another, of which it speaks without necessarily citing it, without summoning it, in fact, sometimes even without naming it. Jeanette explicitly refers to clear and obvious references that express all details in a clear and obvious way, leaving no doubt as to the intended meaning. By implicit references, Jeanette expects an implied reference, not stated, but understood in what is expressed. 7. What is hypertextuality? The fourth type of transtextuality is hypertextuality, which is the focus of study in Gerard Genet's Palimpsest Literature in the Second Degree, published in 1997. According to Genet, hypertextuality involves any relationship uniting a text B, which I shall call hypertext, to an earlier text A, I shall of course call it the hypotext, upon which it is grafted in a manner that it is not of commentary. Thus, hypertextuality represents the relationship between a text and a text or a genre on which it is based, but which transforms, modifies, elaborates or extends, including parody, spoof, sequel, translation. Jeanette's study also concerns the way in which a text can be transformed by ways of self-expurgation, excision and reduction. Self-expurgation can be identified in the differences between the first serialized version and the final published edition of a novel. Excision and reduction can be identified in the works published without controversial issues originally included in the manuscript by the author. Jeanette believes that all texts are hypertextual, but that sometimes the existence of a hypertext is too uncertain to be the basis for hypertextual reading. In such a case, Jeanette reminds the reader that a hypertext can be read either for its own individual value or in relation to its hypotext. 8. What is Architextuality? The fifth type of transtextuality is architextuality which relates to the designation of a text as part of a genre or genres. By architectuality, Gerard Genet refers to the entire set of general or transcendental categories, types of discourse, modes of enunciation, literary genres, 
from which emerges a singular text. The architectural nature of texts also includes thematic and figurative expectations about texts. Jeanette states that a very important factor of this type is the reader's expectations and thus their reception of the work. This video is based on my book The Matrix and the Alice Books. Consider supporting our project by purchasing a copy. The Kindle edition is only 99 cents. Check out the Amazon link in the description below. To make sure you don't miss the next episode, subscribe to Uplife, a space where we strive for an upgraded lifestyle. Ciao, this is Michnia, signing off from Beijing.